In this exercise, we're going to lay out plan and profile sheets along our divided four-lane highway. We're going to open up the corridor or the DGN file that contains the corridor, and we're going to place our sheets in that corridor file. However, that is not a requirement. You could create a blank file, reference the corridor in, and create your sheets in a sheet-based file, and that's probably how you would do it in a real production workflow. Um, but for simplicity here in this small project, I'm going to go ahead and just create them right in the same file. Um, but do realize it is not a requirement. I could certainly create them in a blank file and use references to bring all this together. Now the process to create plan and profile sheets is going to be very similar to what you hopefully saw in the cross-section exercise, if you were able to watch that portion. We're going to create name boundaries. Those name boundaries will then be used to create reference drawing models which will carry into the sheet models and be laid out. What that allows us to do is create different types of sheets. We're going to create plan and profile sheets, a plan over profile type layout today. But we could also create plan only, profile only, plan plan, profile profile, plan and two profiles, whatever combination you needed could be created with this process. So to get started, We'll select our name boundary tool. And instead of using our cross section mode that we used before, we're now going to use our plan mode. So we're going to lay out the plan sheets first, get them defined, then we'll define the profile portion of that, then we'll create our sheets. Just like we did with cross sections, we'll use a drawing seed boundary or a drawing seed to define all of our parameters. We've got a couple set up in our environment here, some plan only, some plan plan, or some plan profile sheets. We're going to do plan profile sheets, and we're currently defining the plan portion of the plan profile, so we'll pick this one. We can specify the detail scale that we want to build these at. We're going to go ahead and build ours at a 500 scale. Um, it's got some untitled names in here right now, but as soon as I go and I pick my alignment, it's going to fill those out for me. So I don't have to pick those names. And now I can define the starting and stopping locations of my plans. I'll just come back and start it at the very beginning of my project. And as I move my cursor along here, it's now going to start showing me where it's building the sheets. Uh, and I could pick this graphically, or I could type it in. I'll just zoom out here a little bit so we can see the whole project and select it kind of graphically. So I'll come all the way down here to the end and create a sheet that goes all the way to the end. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see where it's still creating those sheets. So I'll build one all the way to there. Now, at this point, I really do not want to create the drawings because I still need to define the profile portion of this. So I'm going to turn that option off and select this so that those plan views boundaries are built. So those now exist in my... 2D portion of my file. If I highlight one here, you can see where that plan view boundary exists at. So we now have our plan view boundaries defined. Next, we need to define our profile boundaries. So let's open up a profile window for our geometry. We'll select our name boundary tool again and go to the profile portion of it. Pick our drawing seed. It's got all our standards in it. Now the one difference here is we can choose a method of how we're laying out these profiles. If I was building profile only sheets, I would go ahead and establish my station limits that I wanted to define for these. But I don't. I want these to match up to my plan that I've already laid out. So I'm going to tell it that my method is to read a plan group that I've already built and I can select that available group. So this plan group is the name of these name boundaries that I created here for the plan. That way my profiles will match up to them properly. I'll select my profile alignment here, and it will lay out all of the profile boundaries across there. If it's necessary to stair-step the profiles, to put multiples on a single sheet, it will do that and calculate those for you. I can go ahead and say create drawing now uh, because I do want to go ahead and create the sheets at this point. So I'll accept and create those profile boundaries. 
and it brings up my Create Drawing dialog. This is much like the Create Drawing dialog we saw with cross sections. There really is nothing you need to change on this. All of these different values were filled out from this drawing seed that we picked here. So it has the proper seed files to use. It's got the proper annotation groups to use based on that seed file setup. The one thing I am going to change is I'm going to toggle on this option to add it to the sheet index. The sheet index is, is an index of all of these sheets that we can create. Makes it a little easier to manage later on. You can jump back to sheets. You can create print sets out of the sheets, etc. from the index. So we'll go ahead and add these to that. We'll click OK to let it create them. And it's going to go through and start processing the drawing sheets and creating those. I can see the process down here, uh, progress along the uh, creation down here in the lower right corner. We're about 20% of the way along now, so we'll give it a minute to let these finish creating. Uh, we're creating 28 separate sheets here. Over here you can see the count on the lower left side as it processes each of the sheets. Remember, it's cutting the plan portion, building a drawing model out of that, cutting the profile portion, building a drawing model out of that. It is doing the annotations of the profile portion and then bringing all those together into a sheet file and putting those together into our final sheets in the index. As it nears its completion, once it's done, it will open up the last sheet is the way it works. So it actually dumped us to the very last sheet in the project. But you can see here how it was laid out. It is on a sheet file at a sheet scale. Um, the plan portion at the top, the profile portion at the bottom. The plan is a live reference of that 2D space. So anything that we have drawn in that 2D space will appear here. If you attach additional references, if you draw additional things, if you add some of your own annotations, that will all appear through to here. The profile appears here. It is being annotated. Um, these annotations are coming from the profile grid that was set up, the profile annotation in there. Much like cross sections, if I go to those profile drawing sheets, so if I went to one of these profile drawings, this is where that profile annotation happened at. So if I look at what's referenced, whoops, turn off display here. The profile itself and the terrain are referenced. Everything else is an annotation that got created in this drawing. So that could be updated with different annotation parameters. You could add additional annotations manually on here with your drawing production tools. We looked earlier at the model annotation tools, which is what would do the bulk annotation, but there are also some place label tools here where you can do individual one-off annotations, and there's a lot of parameters already set up in the environment to help you create those labels. Let's go back to our primary view for a second. Now let's take a look at the sheet index I was telling you about. I'm going to open up the Explorer tool and go to the Sheet Index tab, expand out my project name, and I can see an index of all of the sheets that were created. Under those, I can see which drawings were actually used to build that sheet. I can double click on a sheet and it'll jump me to it, so I can use the index in that purpose just to browse to them, which is kind of a handy way to get at things. When I am in one of these cross sections, remember, or one of these plan sheets, remember they are nothing but reference elements here. So if I do need to make an adjustment to anything, I certainly can do that. So if I jump up to sheet 21 here, you can see that we've actually spilled over the boundary just a little bit in here. Maybe I wanted to adjust that. Bring up my reference tool, select that particular reference, and you can see it's the right one because it's highlighted. And I'm just going to pick my move tool and say, you know what, let's move that reference down just a little bit. And let's get it back inside my sheet border there. So you can easily make adjustments to these sheets. The last thing I want to show you with our sheet index file is you do have some quick printing options. You can go to your print organizer and print to either a physical printer or a PDF file. 
And because all of these are nicely organized now into your sheet index, I've got all my sheets right here, and I can quickly save those out or send them to my printer. That completes this exercise. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.